Doxycycline is needed for STI prevention because the status quo just wasn't cutting it anymore. You know, we've had um, decades now of the maybe what I could call the conventional STI prevention tools. So, you know, awareness, you know, awareness campaigns, screening, condoms, and, you know, the, the, the dreaded abstinence, if I can say that, uh, all of which have, I, I think, f for the most part, and this might be a bit controversial, have sort of outlived their utility, I think, in many ways and for many people. So doxycycline is an antibiotic that's been out for decades. It's been first approved uh, in the United States, at least since the 60s. So we have a lot of experience and knowledge about it. There's been a lot of studies and interest in using doxycycline for prevention of STIs, and specifically bacterial STIs like syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia. There's been some big studies that have shown when taking as post-exposure prophylaxis, so that's after a sexual exposure, it's very effective in preventing these bacterial STIs. T'sais, on connaît déjà la doxycycline dans le monde du traitement des ITS, là, comme c'est la première ligne de traitement pour traiter la chlamydia une fois qu'elle est euh, confirmée. On l'utilise aussi en approche syndromique, c'est-à-dire quand la personne a des symptômes compatibles avec une ITS bactérienne. Puis, euh, c'est aussi la deuxième ligne de traitement pour euh, une syphilis quand euh, la personne a une allergie à la pénicilline. New and innovative and effective approaches to preventing sexually transmitted infections are really important because we're seeing in recent years especially that infections like gonorrhea, chlamydia, and syphilis are increasing and increasing rapidly in Canada and around the world. We know that doxy, uh, PEP, so doxycycline as post-exposure prophylaxis, is effective. It's natural to compare it to things like HIV pre-exposure prophylaxis. When we think about HIV PrEP, it's upwards of 99% plus effective. Doxypep is less effective than uh, HIV PrEP. So Doxypep is probably about 80% effective in preventing syphilis and chlamydia. And depending on the background resistance rates of gonorrhea, it's probably going to be 50-50, maybe even less for gonorrhea. There have only been some small studies of doxycycline pre-exposure prophylaxis, doxyprep. Um, and so we're still learning about whether that's going to work effectively to prevent infections, whether it works as well, not quite as well, or better than doxycycline post-exposure prophylaxis. There are also questions about whether these types of interventions work well in other populations that haven't been as well well studied, like cisgender women, so we're, we're waiting more for more data and information about the effectiveness for those populations. For the populations in whom we already have efficacy data, so in GBMSM and trans women, I think we're now at the stage where we need to start thinking about implementation. How do we implement this in a way that is equitable? How do we implement this in a way that is favorable and acceptable to those individuals who need to need need to have it or want to have it? Il y a différents obstacles. Il peut y avoir un obstacle à euh, l'accès. Les cliniciens qui sont plus ou moins formés, là, donc quand je dis cliniciens, je veux dire des personnes qui font la prévention ITS là, devant les euh, avec les, les populations euh, euh, concernées, donc un manque de connaissances. Euh, C'est sûr que le fait qu'il n'y ait pas de ligne directrice canadienne claire là, par rapport à la DOXIPEP, là, ça entraîne aussi ce, ce manque de connaissances-là, puis une réticence, je pense, euh, aux prescripteurs d'aller de l'avant avec ce, avec ce moyen de prévention. Là. Moi, ça m'amène à penser que bien, si nous, on ne la prescrit pas dans un cadre sécuritaire, euh, les personnes intéressées à l'avoir, ils vont potentiellement la trouver d'une autre façon. Donc, euh, De mon côté, moi, j'aime mieux prescrire, même si c'est off le bol, mais savoir que, on va avoir fait le tour de les questions historiques, les allergies. On va avoir parlé des effets secondaires possibles. There are a lot of questions about antibiotic resistance and the potential impacts of doxycycline use on the development and acceleration potentially of antibiotic resistance. Um, and so antibiotic resistance happens when we use some sort of a treatment or an antibiotic agent and the bacteria develops a resistance to that antibiotic. And so for doxycycline, there are some concerns that we could see the development of resistance in gonorrhea, which is already a public health problem of concern, and that we might also see the development of resistance in gonorrhea to other types of antibiotic, not just to the doxycycline type of antibiotic, but to the other antibiotics that are used for treatment of gonorrhea. 
this is a concern because there are very few treatments that effectively work for gonorrhea right now. We're very worried in general on a public health uh, level about resistance to different antibiotics, including doxycycline. We are worried that using doxycycline as a widespread preventative antibiotic may lead to a tick up in, in uh, resistance against doxycycline and other, and other tetracyclines. You know, doxycycline is one of the most commonly prescribed antibiotics out there. We really use it for a whole host of things, treatment from community acquired MRSA to a number of other bacterial infections. Uh, and so we would hate to see resistance to doxycycline emerge more than it already has. Directement relié à cette utilisation-là à faire sur l'antibiorésistance euh, pour rassurer, je crois, les prescripteurs ou les cliniciens ou pas, tu avoir des meilleures données ou tu voir où on, on va avec ça. Euh, mais c'est vrai que moi, ça, ça a quelque chose de rassurant, moi, comme prescriptrice, de savoir que c'est un antibiotique sécuritaire qu'on utilise quand même dans d'autres contextes depuis des années. Là. Because this is an intervention that is used for sexual health, it's used for STI prevention. Um, And ultimately, for many people, it will enhance sexual pleasure by, you know, reducing anxiety or whatever it may be. I think people have, you know, perhaps some uh, unconscious stigma um, around this issue. And, you know, when you think about all of the other sources of antibiotics in the, in the community, in the world, you know, everything from animal feed to, you know, just using antibiotics uh, within healthcare, you know, I don't feel that same um, very stringent approach to to uh, trying to limit the intervention are taken. I feel there's a bit of a double standard. We really feel like we really need to to be be aware of our own of our own potential stigma and our own biases around this, and really need to uh, consider the the patient in front of you and what they need uh, in order to sort of have a, a very healthy sex life and uh, to, to, to really promote their sexual health in a way that takes their, um, their sort of personhood into consideration.